Blessings Facebook. We are ready to rock and roll. I do apologize for the technical difficulties, but uh, we won't let that hinder us. I had to get some things in order uh, to try to get things shared out, and we should be ready to go momentarily. Let's go ahead and begin to worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift you higher. We lift you Here we are. High. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Just a few moments. This is Pastor Edward with the Refining Fire Day 9. Uh, God has a mighty word for us, and we're just going to worship him for a few moments before we go right into the word that he has for us tonight. Hallelujah. Hands up, hearts open, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings to all who are joining in. We're just worshiping God before we get in the word that he has for us for the refining fire tonight. Just waiting for the share. It should be coming up in a second. Hallelujah. Okay, I was able to get it in there, so it's in the group. There we go. All righty, let's go ahead and transition over to where God has us. Hallelujah. Here we go. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. Lord, we glorify you and we magnify your holy name. Lord, you are worthy. You alone are worthy. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all you've done, continue to do, and will do in the future. You are a mighty God. You are a wonderful God. You are a God that looks upon us with loving kindness. You wrap your arms of protection around us. You set us on the right course and in the right direction. We thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for knowing us by name and that you are a present God that is right there working uh, to show us what we should do. To a God who shows 
shows us which direction we should go, a God that shows us where we need help, a God that elevates us and accentuates us, uh, that places us in position that you know we can do even when we don't think we are ready. We thank you for loving us that much, even to tell us the truth with boldness about ourselves. It is so amazing how much care you show for us. You are a father and you are a friend. You care about us from the top of our head uh, to the soles of our feet. You care about every uh, part of us. You care that we are healthy, that we are whole. You care that our mind's in the right place, that our heart's in the right place. You care that we are walking in you to encompass you and showcase you. You care so much that when we showcase you, we can help others. We thank you for showing us the way. We thank you for showing us the path. We thank you. 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 Lord, you are worthy. We thank you even when we fall short uh, uh, that you are right there to lift us up, that your grace is sufficient, that your mercy endures forever. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for uh, giving us opportunities even when we don't deserve it. We thank you for seeing us as we are, for seeing us who you created us to be and helping us to get to that form of us. Thank you for tearing down false altars in our life. <coughs> Thank you for showing us what is not like you. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your name for, again, Lord, you are worthy and you alone are worthy. Your name is above every name, every disease, every sickness, every ailment, every negative thought, every wickedness. Uh, we love you for that. We know that we can rely on you. We believe that the blood still has power that no matter what we go through we can call on you and have access to heaven we thank you for hearing our prayers hearing our cries we thank you for lifting us up and picking us up when we feel like we are falling beneath the waters we thank you we thank you for giving us confidence hallelujah we thank you for giving us confidence that the waters will not overtake us we thank Thank you for that today. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we go forth before we begin, Lord, uh, I ask uh, a request, a simple request. As we look out into the world, there are many people who are grieving. There are many loved ones that they were connected to that have left this earth. Lord, we pray their strength in this moment. We pray that you heal any grieving heart, that contentment and, and uh, comes their way, that they are able to walk forward with courage and confidence in you, that their faith is unwavering, that any hurts are mended immediately, that they're able to remember the good times and walk through uh, to give their testimony of how they were impacted by those they were lost, that many may see you and love you the more. But go into these homes and mend these hearts and show your face and show them that you are God above all things. That if they lean on you, that you will give them the strength they need. That you are the way, that you are the truth, and that you are the life in all things. Your name can bring someone through. Your hand pulls them through. Your feet uh, 
drags them out. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. 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 We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your healing hand. We thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you for your glorious face shining down upon us, hearing everything we have to say. In your mighty matchless name, Jesus, we come to you and we pray on intercess on behalf of those hurting. Uh, for whatever reasons they may be hurting, that they may know you better, that they may be able to see you in greater abundance. Lord, it is hard in times like this uh, for those who are grieving, who are dealing with pain, who are hurting to really see beyond the cloudiness in front of them. Lord, uh, remove the cloudiness in front of them and only allow your glory to be there. Lord, we thank you. And as we go forth and we uh, release this word that you have given us, that you uh, are the only one speaking, that the word that you have given is not distracted or hindered by me or anyone else, that the uh, attacks of the enemy are canceled in this moment, that your word again goes forth unhindered, unhampered, undampened, not changed, that the very thing that you call it forth to do, that it does that thing. We love you. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify your holy name in the name, the mighty name, the matchless name. No name like it. No name comes close to it. No names above it. The name Jesus. We come to you right now and say amen. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a God who is a healer. We serve a God who is a redeemer. His, his power, his authority. He can touch every avenue of our life. He can uh, mend the brokenness. He can uh, mend the heartbreak. He can pull it all together. He is close to the brokenhearted. And we thank you right now. Even when it does not look good, Lord, we know that you have the understanding of where it's going and we can lean on you and trust in you. We believe in you and the direction you're taking. You are not a God that should lie. Uh, so we stand firmly on your word. We stand firmly on that word at the word, at the moment it's spoken. We believe it right now and we walk in faith. Lord, uh, give us the desires to be more like you. Give us the desires to walk like you, to talk like you, to sound like you, uh, to e uh, emulate you, and to allow the light of you to shine off us. Use us as your messenger. Use us as whatever you need us to be. Allow us to be your vessel. Uh, cleanse us and purify us so as you pour your word into us, as you pour your way into us, as you pour into us your will that it goes into a clean vessel that there is no impurities within it and as we walk and we do your will that your light goes out and touches the masses that it goes out and does the very thing it was called to do that you and you alone are glorified uh, that everything we do is pleasing unto your sight we love you Lord cleanse us and, and cleanse us, uh, cleanse us right now, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our spirit, cleanse our mind, cleanse our soul, cleanse our health, hallelujah, some of us we talked about earlier, uh, that the foods we eat have an effect on us, cleanse us of our decision making skill around foods, cleanse us around the decision making around food, and any impurities that have gone into our bodies, allow them to be released, Allow that also to be symbolic of the release of you, what you are able to demonstrate within us so that as we walk this earth and step out and uh, place our foot down and tread on terror.
territory, that we take territory like you've taken territory within us unto you. Lord, we call forth you. We call on you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We worship you. We praise you. We lift your name up on high. You are a God that can do all things. You are a God that can turn the impossible into the possible. You are a God who will come through and bring forth a truth. Even if we personally don't want it that way, you will come through with some tough love and make it right and make it appropriate and put it in alignment to what you already see for our lives. When we accept you fully and I'll accept you into our life. Good evening, Sister Sahara. Good evening, Prophet Latanya. Hallelujah. We're just giving God some worship. We're giving God some praise for he and he alone is worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. I don't have to preach a message today because God is already moving to on those who are able to lift up their voices because he is a God who can search and he does search the heart and examines the mind. He already knows where we are. He already knows where we're going. Ah, that's a false altar that God just placed in my spirit right now. Too many of us are desiring that man be our savior, that man show us the way, that man gives us direction, but God says, you can come to me just by calling the name Jesus, accessing the throne room. He already knows you. You just have to have a conversation with him. He already knows what you're dealing with. You just have to have a conversation with him. He does have a word that he wants me to give out today, uh, but I have to tell you, uh, if you access the throne room, he he will give you that message. If you access the throne room, he will give you the message for yourself. God is a God who is ever present, who is just waiting up for us to follow him. God says, follow me fully, follow me fully, follow me fully, access me, be okay with accessing me. I'm tired of my people uh, turning man into their gods. I am tired of my people uh, walking under the auspices of religion, that demonic spirit of religion that causes my people to walk forth blinded and powerless. You may look like you have a form of godliness but when you walk as man as your savior Jesus was the only man that walked on this earth that can save Jesus is the only man that walked on this earth uh, who can deliver he is the only man that walked on this earth that can provide God is saying in this moment I need you to understand that I am God peace be still be still for and know that that I am God. God is calling forth an understanding that puts away self, that tears down these altars that man has placed around us, that has caused us to believe uh, that man knows exactly what it should be, what it should look like, how it's supposed to be, and how God is. God will be placed in a box if man has anything to do with it. As the Pharisees and Sadducees, that evil demonic spirit of the Pharisees and Sadducees when Jesus was right in front of them. It's the divine self that he is. He was standing right there in all of his glory and all of his majesty but because they had placed God in a box they didn't see the Jesus right in front of them. God is saying come out of what man has boxed your mind in about God. God is greater than any box and if you box him in you won't see his glory to the fullness that he is. You can only see him through the lenses that you see him in. You won't understand who he is. You won't understand his mindset. You won't understand anything clearly about him if you continue to box him in. See, not everybody is going to accept that message because they have been manipulated too much uh, that their mindset has been uh, what is it called? What is it called? Uh, 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 I can't even think of the word. It's, it's in the form of uh, manipulation 
manipulation where people have caused their mind to truly believe exactly what they said. It is manipulation. Uh, but God is saying, I'm trying to take my people out of that so that they don't work in a form of godliness, not ex uh, acknowledging the power they're in. I need them to work in godliness with the power. I need them to understand my divine nature and walk in the authority that I have given them. Uh, because if you do not, uh, there is a time uh, that they will say from the heavens, uh, avoid these people. Avoid you. You don't want to be in the mix uh, because uh, what does it say? What did Jesus say? What did he clearly say? Not all people who say, Lord, Lord, uh, I've done this in your name. I've done that in your name. Not all people will access heaven. Not all people will be accepted by me. Jesus said there will be some who have done the, 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 outward things. They have done the things that a uh, man can look upon and say, I am pleased with him. But when God searches their heart and their mind and realize the deep decrepitcy that's within their hearts, uh, that they would not allow God to clean out, that they continue to hold on to that and walk forth in that, allowing that to pour out, not only pour out and demonstrate their walk, it poured out onto other people. God says, uh, those people, I will say to them, I do not know you. I never knew you. Depart from me. Hallelujah. 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 So we have a mighty lesson today. God just released that and it actually goes in alignment with the word that he gave me. He gave me a lot. And so I am uh, bending my will fully to the Lord and allow him to lead me on how he wants this presented uh, for God has a way he gave me this information for a reason whether he will have me uh, pour it all out tonight or if it will just be uh, in parts uh, we will allow the Lord to lead we will allow the Lord to direct our path I am thankful that we are able to access a God who is ever present, who will give us direction if we just tap into him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Malachi 3, verses 2 through 3, with the promise of 4. That is where we are in the refining process. That is what God is taking us through. We're in the ninth day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He continues to allow us to accomplish day after day after day. We went through day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day eight, seven, day eight. Uh, and now we're on day nine, uh, soon to tra uh, tra transition into um, a new sector. A uh, reprobate mind is one of those things. Uh, but what I was thinking about was um, uh, when someone... Um, I, 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 I'll get the word and I'll share it in the group as soon as it hits my spirit. Um, I can't I can't think of that word, but it has to do with manipulation uh, of the mind. Uh, and God is calling us out of those strongholds that that man wants to put us in, that he'll he'll try to rev up your emotional spirit to cause you to uh allow them to shear you beneath the skin um, and it's through that type of manipulation uh, that many in the church uh, that are false prophets lost prophets walking in the spirit of familiarity who are continuously shearing the sheep beneath their skin and uh, uh, demanding uh, their uh, them to walk powerlessly, not giving them the fullness of the word, not uh, perverting the word. God is saying in this moment that we have to move in, in a way that we see exactly what it is, what it's for, what they are, There's the spirit of the thing. Uh, so in every aspect of this lesson that God has given, uh, you will find that it is rooted uh, in the understanding that discernment must be there. And if we go even further back, uh, uh, where does discernment come from? The Holy Spirit. So we must have the Holy Spirit deeply rooted in turn. <coughs> 
internally within us. So we are connecting all of these messages, but also traveling forward. Um, but as soon as I, I, under, I remember that word, I don't know why it's eluding my mind. I will make sure uh, to convey it. Hallelujah. Um, so the root of the refining fire, we are in the midst of the refiner's fire, um, is, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller soap. He will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness, the promise. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. So as a simple recap, we have the Israelites, we have the children of God, we have the complete children of God, and those are God's chosen people. And their inheritance, as we studied uh, before, is territory. Uh, territory in the scripture demonstrates um, actually a physical territory, but God is reali uh, explaining there is a revelation where we walk by the spirit that in this time, uh, the territory that the chosen, the mass group of the chosen shall receive is territory in the physical as well as territory in the spiritual. Uh, but then within those people, uh, there is a chosen people. So there God has a people within a people. He has a people within a people. Hallelujah. And the Levites were the people within the people. Uh, he's stuck under the, his toy. Hold on one moment. Hallelujah. Hey, you cannot run under that. All right. Let's give you this. Here you, here you go, buddy. There you go. Go get it. You want to sit with me? All right. Let's let's come on up here. You can sit with me and we can preach the word together. Let's do it. Hallelujah. All right. I got my helper. Hallelujah. He says hello. So there is a chosen people. With there's a people within the people. They're all chosen. Um, the people within the people, the Levites, uh, they were, in essence, the priests. We have a high priest. There's not that priestly component anymore. But the spirit of it is understanding that there are people who God has promised land to, uh, territory, physical territory, as well as spiritual territory. But then there are other people who have been promised uh, access to him, direct access, greater than the access he automatically gives. We know that to be true because that's why there are apostles, prophets, teachers, um, pastors, and evangelists. That's why uh, there are different assignments because he will speak to people differently. There are people who have access uh, greater to God than others. It just is what it is. And a lot of people do not want to understand that component. But God says there are a group of people who ha who would forsake and say, I don't need ma uh, physical manifestations of this blessing and that blessing as long as I just have Jesus, as long as I just have God, as long as God can continue to talk to me and walk through. If that's these type of people that this lesson is for. That's what this whole refining process is about. Those people that would be okay with not receiving all of these physical things, but are okay and content with just receiving God, that the access to God, not for any uh, reason for selfish ambition or to, for prideful sake or ego, it's just they love God so much that that's all they need. Uh, having access to him and talking to him and being able to hear his word in such a way uh, that will give them the joy to move forward. Uh, these are the type of people. They can even go forth and intercess uh, directly with God. They can have this, uh, and not saying that anybody else can, because you can access God through uh, speaking 
But some people don't have the Elijah type access. Some people don't have the Moses type access. Some people just don't have it. And it's not anything bad because these all are God's chosen and God's looking out for everyone just the same. And what we find with those who just want Jesus, those who would be okay with not having uh, all these other physical blessings met, uh, God will turn around and make it happen. He has it all a system already set up that everyone will be provided for. It's just the way and technique that he takes us through. And it is okay. And many people do not want to hear this because they so they, they're hung up on the thing that God says I can have you can have access by calling on my name. Uh, it's yes you can and we believe that strongly and that's what it is. But we also have to understand that if indeed uh, God didn't set people in certain positions for certain and accesses, there would be no need for these under shepherds called pastors. There would be no need for apostles, prophets, evangelists, and, 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 and teachers. God has said that in this moment, as we continue to walk forward and achieve him, achieve him, he will provide our needs. He will provide for us in all the ways that we need. So we have to be okay. And part of tearing down this all false altar is to uh, realize that even in the midst of uh, the inclusion component of God, there is a separation. We have to be okay with uh, knowing where we stand so that we can walk effectively in our assignment, in our calling. Too many people even in the body of Christ they're still dealing with pride and ego they're still dealing with I have to be above somebody the body of Christ is not a competition the body of Christ, within the body of Christ, it is not I'm above you and you're above me. But in the body of Christ, it is about us being fitly joined together, working for the good of God according to his purpose as he has called us, as he has given us our assignment, as he has given us uh, according to our ability, as just like the talents, as he has given us according to our ability. And when the hand is working, uh, the foot needs to stay out of the hand's way and do the footwork. Uh, get the hand in position so the hand can go and turn the doorknob. We have to, the foot is not designed to uh, turn the doorknob. Be okay with the hand doing just that. And the hand stops doing handstands and taking away the abilities of the foot. We have to get pride and ego out of the church. Uh, I'm not talking about the church building. I can care less about the church building. God can care less about the church building. He cares about the church, which is you and I. How do I know that? He shut down the churches now. The building has no power. It is the people. That is the church. God is calling us to stop relying on uh, tangible things, uh, these things that mean nothing, that are inanimate. They can't do anything for us. It's the God within us connecting to the God above that moves things in our lives, that moves things on our behalf. The Holy Holy Spirit within us uh, as we give our moans and groans and our cry out to God and speak in uh, our heavenly language. The, in, uh, the Holy Spirit will not only edify us, but it will in, uh, he will intercess on our behalf. Uh, God is saying, I need you to put down pride and ego. I need you to put down these false altars of thought uh, on what you thought I was and who you thought I was. Uh, access you thought I gave you. I need you to understand that man has set it up uh, through the spirit of religion with the spirit of Leviathan, with the python spirit coming in as their attack dog to strangle the life out of people, uh, to position people powerless. God is saying in this moment that we have to tear down our uh, preconceived notions of who he is. We have to tear down our preconceived notions of uh, who who he has called us to be. We have to tear down our preconceived notions about how the church works. We have to tear down our preconceived notions about how um, uh, how we can access God and who God is and how he will work in our life. Most importantly, we have to tear down these preconceived notions about how uh, who God is and what he is. God says, I need my people to walk in power. 
power. I am raising up a son and daughter, uh, sons and daughters. Uh, they won't look like everyone else. They won't sound like everybody else. Uh, but because of their genuine and authentic walk with me, because their genuine and authentic display of me, because of their genuine and authenticity all about them, that I am elevating them up to walk in greater authority, to do greater things, to do wonderful things in my name for my glory. Uh, these people love me. Uh, these children of mine, these sons and daughters, uh, they love me. And they love me so much that they have truly uh, set themselves aside and set themselves up uh, to just completely do my work. I shall provide. I shall be a resource. I shall be the one that guides them. I shall, I shall, I shall. The, the promises that I have placed upon their lives are uh, ever abounding. Uh, they are greater than many have seen in the past. The Lord is saying that the authority, the length of their authority has greaten, uh, greatly heightened, not because I've given them any different access than I've given anyone else. Uh, their uh, authority has uh, lengthened and, and greatened, uh, uh, become greater because, hallelujah, hold on one second, son, you gotta stop. Their uh, authority has become greater, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on, boy. Hallelujah. Their authority has become greater because they accept me in the purity of who I am. Hallelujah. They've accepted me in the purity of who I am. They've accepted me as the God that I am. They are not afraid to say I'm not willing to put God in the box that you're willing to put God into. You can walk around with that Pharisees and Sadducees spirit, but that is not for me. I cut the, I draw the line between your way of thinking and God's way of thinking. I am not lukewarm. I shall not be lukewarm. I shall make a decision and make a choice. And the choice that I make is with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. See, that can be the word right there. That can be exactly what God has conveyed for, the, for tonight, in which it is. That is really the fullness of the message. We can stop right here and end the live. But let's go forth because God is in a position uh, like Moses asked, show me your glory. When Moses asked, show me your glory, he was saying, show me your way. Show me the weight behind your way. That's why teaching is so important in this season. Uh, we need teachers to come out and explain the way as God has, uh, uh, the why as God has given it. So that the people uh, can walk with greater confidence, greater understanding. Because God is releasing his why. He is releasing who he is. He is giving us the explanation to the level that we can receive it. And many of us uh, can receive it greater if we just access him more. If we are uh, in quantity, in time, in, in intentionality, uh, in quality, we must access him in greater. God is saying uh, you have the ability, but because you have not chosen to walk in the ability, uh, I can only give you uh, according to your ability demonstrated now. I can't give it to you according to your perceived uh, demonstration because uh, I know what your potential is. I know what your potential is. I know what it is, but until you manifest the potential, uh, I cannot release the fullness unto you. God is saying if you have a basket that is full of holes, that at the bottom it is torn and tattered, where if you put any weight on it, it will rip open. I cannot release the fullness of what I'm trying to release to you, even though I know you have the ability. You have to mend that, and the way you mend that is what we're going through this refining process, and that you actually work at uh, mending the holes, and work at uh, getting rid of the sore spots, and showcasing, and giving it, and taking it all to God. And God says, when you are at 
that position that you have mended your basket that can hold the weight of what I'm going to give you, I will release it to you. There are some things you can do now, but right now, understand the fullness I want to release to you. Uh, you aren't ready for, and those that are, I'm releasing it now. I'm so thankful for this word. And we haven't even gotten into scripture. Let's go ahead and go into scripture. Let's talk about what this lesson's about. It's three. God has three different parts. I, 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 I don't know how he's going to take this lesson. He's given me a whole bunch of information um, and he's categorized it. Um, but we're letting him lead. And if he decides that we're going to cut this off and uh, finish it for another day, we will. If he tells me to continue, we're going to do that. I'm just going to follow his lead as always. Uh, he knows what he's doing and he knows exactly what needs to be said. Um, there are three components that God is going to walk us through. It is the concept of inclusion, the concept of inclusion. It is discernment. And it is elevation, activation, and mobilization. What you will find is discernment is wrapped all the way through this. So when we do get to the discernment, it won't be a lot because he's already talking about it fully throughout every aspect. But let's begin with tearing down one false altar. A lot of people don't want to hear this, but I'm going to speak the truth and I'm going to speak it with boldness. God is not a God of inclusion. God is not a God of inclusion. See, that is the devil's ploy to keep the body weak. God is a God who does not accept everyone, but he does love everyone. Many people want to say, God accepts me as I am. No, he does not. He loves you as he is. He accepts you when you choose him and you walk in his will and his way. Because if that is the case, there would be no need for hell. If that is the case that he accepts everyone, there would be no reason for Jesus to have died on the cross. If that is the truth, there is no reason that we would continue to have to bring people into the body of Christ to go out and preach the word across the globe. There would be no reason for that. That goes into another lesson, uh, saved but, uh, and always saved. Uh, we are saved. No man can pluck us out of the hand of God, but we can. No man can pluck us out of the hand of God, but we can. We can make decisions that pluck us right out of the safety of his hand. Pluck us right out of the living life of his hand. So let's get this correct. God is a... An exclusionary God with inc uh, inclusionary qualities. He is an exclusionary God with inclusionary qualities. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Um, uh, while God desires all to be part of the body, while he desires all to be included, uh, the fullness of the inclusion occurs within the body. That's why Jesus was demonstrating that there was a line in the sand. You're either on that side or you're on this side. Uh, if you're on that side, go about your way. On this side, uh, sin no more. That is why in Revelations, uh, the scripture reads that, uh, actually I'm going to turn to that real quick. God is moving different than the order that he actually gave it to me. Uh, that's why he said, I know your deeds, uh, Revelation 3 and 15 and 16. You don't have to turn because we're going back. I know your deeds that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. God is saying you have to make a decision. 
You have to make a decision. I am not going to accept just anything. Uh, the demonic wants us to believe that those who have not accepted Jesus, uh, they're all right. Those who just walk good and I'm a good person, that they're all right. Uh, God says there's a place in hell just for you if indeed that is what you do. Uh, I expect you to choose me and with your free will, I expect you to choose me so you can go where you believe that you will go. I want to come forth with that promise that I gave you, but if you do not choose me, if you continue to ride the fence, if you stand on that other side, you have chosen not me. Hallelujah. So God is saying, I love everyone. I desire everyone to choose me. I want everyone to be part of me. But there are some stipulations. There are some qualifications. There are some paths that you must step through. Uh, but not everybody is going to go to heaven. He hasn't said, he didn't say that in Matthew, that depart from me, I never knew you for any reason. He is literally saying that there are some people that are not of me. And they may look like they're doing my bidding, but they're not of me. Discernment. That's why we have to have discernment. There are things that look, uh, look like the real thing. Uh, but they're counterfeit. Uh, but God is saying there is a separation. God is not saying that I'm um, exclusionary to hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, it's not about hurting anybody's feelings. It's about saving someone's life. You have to choose and choose to step into the fullness of God so that you can have the access to everlasting life. Because if you do not realize who God is and what he expects, you will go up and stand in front of the pearly gates of heaven and God will look at the book and say, you're not in this book. Your name's not in this book. I don't even know you. I never knew you. We don't want to go up there and get uh, uh, have that type of disappointment and be sent right down to hell because we chose to just do it our way. To chose to put God in the box that we wanted to put him into. We need to understand who God is truly. Be okay exactly with who God is and accept him at his word. And understand that we must make a choice, make a decision to go from the wicked side on into the land of promise. God says, choose me. I cannot stand lukewarm water. I cannot stand water that is not of me. I need you to be pure. I need you. You don't have to be perfect. You just need to walk in righteousness. The first step is truly choosing me and stop putting me in a box. Thus says the Lord. And when we look into the body of Christ, there's even a separation in the body of Christ. It's not to put one above the other. There's just different responsibility. Uh, when I was a senior pastor of Kingdom Cross Church before God moved me back into my home church to be the executive direct uh, executive pastor, um, he would have me constantly let everybody know, um, I may be the pastor of this church, but I'm just like you. I just have additional responsibilities. Uh, God has us on a plane to understand that the body of Christ is one. That there's nothing weaker than the next person. This is scripture. You can read it. I, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, no one's weaker than the other person. You need the foot. You need the every piece of it. Whatever you think might be the weaker person. First thing, if you think that there's a weaker person in the body of Christ, you need the deliverance. If you think there is someone lesser than the other, you need deliverance. But God is saying there is even a separation in the body of Christ. And when I say separation, it is not about person to person. It is about assignment to assignment. The hand doesn't do the footwork. The shoulder doesn't do the leg work. It also is there are, God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not everyone is a pastor. Not everyone is a teacher. Not everybody is an evangelist. Not everybody, not everybody is. Too many people that are out there saying that I'm a prophet, just because you prophesy one time does not make you a prophet. prophet. Uh, because, what am I saying? Because everyone is called to prophesy. Everyone is called to prophesy. 
prophesy. The old men will dream dreams and the uh, young will prophesy. God is saying that we all have that access and ability and he will use whom he chooses to use. Uh, but just because you prophesy one time does not make you a prophet. Just because you uh, gave someone some great care and compassion and gave them some great advice does not mean that you are a pastor. Just because uh, you built an area or caused a, 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 a fall in the area uh, you're, doesn't mean that you are an apostle. God says get in your lane. There are so many vacancies because too many people in the body of Christ are trying to be something that they're not and they're not even affected, effective at it. God is saying if you can't do what I've asked you to do and get in the lane you're supposed to get in, uh, I'm going to have to eject you because you're not being obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What is God saying? He said, I don't want you to toil on what you have to do. Uh, if you have to make a choice between sacrificing and obedience, choose obedience. So God is saying, be obedient and do your part according to what I've assigned to you and only you have discernment and have understanding of exactly what I've called you to do and stay in your lane. Now I'm speaking to those who may come on and those who may have needed to hear that um, because there are also people who are called to the government of the kingdom. There are people who are called to the apostleship and the prophet, uh, office of the prophet and office of the so on and so forth. Uh, and they haven't even taken their position yet. They've been told exactly who they are and they won't step into that position. It is because they have continuously uh, been beaten down and told to know your place to sit in the corner you don't know what you're talking about you are not equipped uh, right now you're not ready uh, but God says I don't qualify based on man's standard I am doing a new thing can you not perceive it I am doing a new thing can you not perceive it I qualify based on my standards and I qualify qualify not on your standards, not on your neighbor's standards, not on your family standards. I qualify the called upon who, uh, upon my standards. I qualify those I have called according to what I believe they can do. And it's not even that I believe it. I know it. I see it walked out in eternity. It is already done. You just have to choose it. Wow, we are skipping all around. Hallelujah. We've talked, uh, we've already talked on uh, assignments and that, but let's get back to the word and try to get um, some understanding. So uh, Malachi 3 and 8, it says, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me, but you say, how have I robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows, test me. See, that's part of discernment as well. Even God is saying, test me, test me, test all things. Let's go to 11. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you. So if you are obedient to me, I will pour out blessings from heaven. I will open the windows of heaven. I will do it all in overflow. And then I will rebuke the devourer for you. See, it says in the scripture that resist the devil and he shall flee. Resist the devil. So he gives us that authority. But if we stand in position of uh, obedience and we, God will uh, demonstrate, it, this is a prescription. He just, he just released, this is a prescription. There's a, God demonstrates a lot of prescription. If we just follow the divine prescription, we will see the successes. We'll see the desires of our heart. We'll see the victories. And this is a prescription. He says, be obedient. Bring it to me. I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing unto you uh, uh, until it overflows. 
And then after I pour out the blessings upon you, see, I haven't even dealt with the devil. You may be dealing with the devil. You may be resisting the devil all along the way, but there's going to come to a point that I will jump in and I will uh, rebuke the devourer for you. So it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grape. The Lord uh, says the Lord of hosts. That's a prescription. That's a prescription. And many of us in our lives, when we were just obedient, when we were obedient, see, God didn't reveal that part of it uh, to me when I was studying. He revealed it and dropped that in my spirit right now. He says, that's the prescription. Obedience, then I will give you uh, access to me and I will give you blessings. And then I will rebuke the devil. All that work you've been doing. <coughs> It comes down to your obedience to me. Continue to walk in the authority that I've given you so you can resist the devil. Part of the devil is the uh, spiritual attacks that come directly onto you. But some of the things that we have been dealing with are also uh, resisting the devil. The demonic attacks against us because we have been worshiping altars. That's why he wants to refine us so that we aren't hindered by those things. Those things we won't even have to resist anymore because he has purified us and gotten those out of of our lives and then he will uh, open the windows of heaven and have some real conversations with us he will allow us to peer in and see some things and to understand some things to get this uh, relationship like Moses had this face to face type relationship where Moses hallelujah Jesus thank you Lord uh, that Moses had with God he was able to access that window he was able to hear God and see God uh, let's use a now from the United States uh, uh, he was able to smell the apple pie that was in the that was being baked in the oven God says I'm giving you access that you'll be able to increase your senses, you'll smell the goodness of me, you'll hear the goodness of me, you'll uh, taste uh, you'll uh, see uh, you'll feel the goodness of me and you'll be able to do all that through that window that I'm opening the access to and I'm going to even walk to the window and have that conversation Conversation with you. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, what I'm making in the kitchen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the example, Holy Spirit. I'm going to even show you uh, what I'm baking in the uh, oven. I'm showing you what I'm putting on the stove. I'm showing you when you sit down at that table in front of your enemies, the meal that I am going to serve is you and your enemies that right before then, uh, right before I place them as footstools, as Right before then, uh, you're going to understand the meal that I'm cooking and even understand why I'm doing it. I'm going to pour out blessings. See, not all blessings are physical uh, and, and tangible as material on this earthly. They are so tangible in the spirit realm. You're going to be able to feel them and touch them and taste them. Uh, they're going to even be more real than what you see here. Because it's going to take you to a place and a position that you've never been before. It's going to take you to an understanding that you've never seen before. It's going to take you to the understanding that even the apostle, as the apostles were walking and their minds will open up he's going to give you that type of understanding where you're going to be able to go and teach and preach and you're going to be able to go and touch lives you're going to be able to touch people and they shall be healed you're going to be able to see signs and miracles and wonders happen because of the Holy Spirit working through you it's because of the understanding that God is going to release to you through that open heaven through that open window through it all and the blessings he pours out they're going to be tangible they're going to be so tangible, you're going to be able to taste them. Uh, but those who aren't hearing won't be able to see that uh, what you're seeing. They won't be able to taste what you're tasting. Uh, there's a separation. But it's because your heart has become so connected to God that God showed you some of the inner working. When you have a best friend, uh, the friend or the acquaintance don't get that access as best friend to best friend. God is saying, I'm trying to show you a higher level of friendship than you've ever seen seen before. A friend may die for a friend, but a best friend will give you greater access to them. You'll be able to oh Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you walk forth in obedience and he opens the windows of heaven and he pours out all these different magnificent wonderful blessings upon your life. 
He's going to rebuke the devil. He's going to rebuke the devourer for you, for you, not even for him. You heard those words. Let me be clear. He loves you so much. There are things he's doing for you that he's willing to do for you and you alone. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you. And so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land. Hallelujah. See, if you are land, land has the ability to produce. He just dropped this in my mind. Land has the ability to produce. Land has the ability to produce. God is setting you up in a position to produce unhindered with dominion. So you can truly walk in the prophecy, the words that he spoke over your life, the, 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 um, um, uh, I can't think of it. It starts with the I. But when he spoke it into your life, he said, be fruitful and multiply, be fruitful and multiply. It's because you are a territory. You, hallelujah, you are a territory. You are a piece of the puzzle. And from your bosom, you shall be fruitful and multiply. Your land shall be fertile. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about the blessings that the, the Israelites will receive and all that stuff or, or the chosen people of God. I'm talking about you. What God is going to birth out of you is coming from a land that is fertile. And he's already spoken over you and told you imparted was the word that I was going to say imparted. He has already imparted into you his activating words. Be fruitful and multiply. All the nations will call you blessed for you shall be a delightful land. Not just the nations of Israel. Not just the nations within Judah, not just all the tribes, all the nations. Every nation that was, is, shall come. They all shall know that you are a delightful land. See, see, to be delightful is not just being pleasant because man looks upon the outward appearance. The world looks upon things that aren't spiritual or deep inside in the heart and the mind. <clears throat> they don't even have that ability. They don't have that hearing. So they're going to look on the outside. What, what, what makes things delightful to the world, to all the rest of the nation? That, that the land is fruitful. That the land is fruitful as well. Hallelujah. 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 So, I was going to talk on, on the church, but God is leading me in a different realm. We may talk about that tomorrow to really tear down some false altars. Um, but let's turn to discernment. Um, we've been talking about discernment. So, how do you know these things? How do you know these things have to happen? Um, we may go back to it real quick, but right now we're, we're actually closed. We got to get ready to close because this is beyond the time that I was expecting. Um, but I do want to touch on two things, and we'll actually uh, do part two and, and, and fulfill this. But uh, let's go to 2 Timothy. Um, no. already have it bookmarked. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5 and 11. It says, Concerning him, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. 
and you have come need to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. God is saying that let's not have to backtrack. He's already taken us to a level where we're able to eat spiritual food, uh, spiritual solid food. Um, let's make sure that as we go forward and God continues to feed us, that we are okay with receiving um, spiritual solid food. Every now and then it's good to quench your thirst with some spiritual milk, but our 99.999% of our diet should be solid food. We should be able to take that solid food that we have ingested and then put it into practice. It says, uh, don't just live by the spirit, walk by the spirit. It says, don't just take the word that I've given you. Use that and put it into practice, put it into practice in your life, but also take it outside of you. Let's go further here. As you go along. You will find some people that you are to avoid. Let's make sure that things that we are to avoid. Hallelujah. Let's make sure things that we are to avoid, they aren't rooted in us either. Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3. But realize this. That in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self. Let's not have that within us. Let's make sure we are able to understand and, and see the behaviors that attach to each one of these. So as we're going forth and we're allowing the spirit to elevate the discernment in within us, we're also able to use the word of God. Because as it said in Hebrews, uh, let me go back to Hebrews real quick. Where'd you go? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hebrews. I have everything bookmarked. There we go. It says on um, verse 14, but solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. So it's saying that you have the spirit and then you've been studying the word and you've been putting the word into practice to see the effects as well. How does the word affect and change things? How, what have you seen come up against the word? What behaviors have come out? It allows you to see things immediately and then pick up on things. And then as you have the Holy Spirit within you, you're like, oh, that's why the Holy Spirit jumped in my belly and made me feel like no. It's because uh, the word revealed uh, the demonic that is right in front of me. Hallelujah. So uh, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, uh, gossip, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding a form of godliness, although they have denied his power, um, avoid such men as these we must have uh, discernment and discern who is of good and who is of evil who is of the devil and who is not of the devil who is beholden to the wickedness and who is not who is aligned with wickedness and who is not so that we know who is not of God and if indeed these people are doing these things uh, we need to realize uh, what God is saying God is telling some of us to tear down and build up and he's telling uh, but he's telling the masses to avoid men such as these we have to discern and understand who they are so we know what to do and where to go. We have to also understand uh, when we know exactly uh, what we're dealing with, we'll know how to attack it and the Holy Spirit will guide us. We'll be able to tap into and hear the Holy Spirit in clarity with precision and accuracy. So when we are called to cast out a demon, when we are called to heal the Holy Spirit based on the practice that we have placed into uh, practice from the word, we are able to move forward 
Lord with pinpoint accuracy because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you that is the spirit of Leviathan. This is how you cast it out. From your experience, this is what you will see. These are the words you're going to say and this is why you tear down that stronghold. And then after that and all and said and done, this is how you help that person finalize their wholeness path. See, God is setting us up for in a position. Before I'm going to transition and finalize, but God wanted me to point out 1 Timothy 6 and 6. Holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Let me go to three. It says, if anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words, uh, those of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing. But he uh, has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of depraved minds and depraved of the truth. Uh, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. And then the next scripture says, but godliness actually is a mean of means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. So what the difference between those two? See, the sermon is going to tell you there are some people out there that are using uh, the word of God, the, the message of godliness um, for their own personal and selfish desires, for vain conceit and selfish ambition and those things are not of God. And God is saying they are using those as their gain. They don't even understand what the heck we are doing on this earth. They just know that that is a come up for them. But let me be honest with you, he says. Uh, godliness is actually a for, uh, a great gain uh, when it's internal and when it is a con uh, attached and com accompanied by contentment. Remember. The love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and perceived themselves with many grie uh, griefs. Uh, their selfish ambition and their focus on money, their focus on these other material things, uh, their come up, focus on the come up, has placed them in a position that they've done it to themselves. That the issues that they're facing, the constant problems that they're having, they've done it for themselves. Instead of relying on God and walking out the word of God and allowing God to provide, allowing God to supply, allowing him to be the provision and the supply. Uh, they've relied on themselves and their wicked desires uh, and they go forth and they uh, shear the sheep beneath the skin. Uh, God is saying that we must understand there are people uh, who are preaching the word of God for the love of Money and their problems that they are dealing with are theirs and theirs alone caused by them. They're just like Judas. Uh, Judas, when he made up his mind, uh, it wasn't the action that did him in. It was the moment he made up his mind to deceive Jesus that he hung himself. Uh, so God is saying these false prophets, these wolves that are in the pulpit, they're going through hell uh, because that is where they've chosen to reside. So God is saying, but flee from these things, you man and woman of God, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good faith, uh, fight of faith. God says, love, love what I love and hate what I hate. There are six things which the Lord hates, Proverbs 6 and 16. Yes, seven, which are an ab abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that runs rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 11 says, Do not participate in any form of wickedness, but even expose it. How do you know what you're exposing is uh, uh, um, just uh, 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 is 
covering someone who is wicked or covering someone who just fell a little bit and God still wants to work with them and or 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 it perceived you know because you know there's a difference between uh, the real and lookalikes the real and counterfeits uh, it looks like um, what the false would do um, so I need to expose them as being false how do you know uh, that they are falling in line that is not acceptable to God uh, when we look at um, um, Joshua and they were hiding in Rahab's home. Uh, that is a form of deceit. Uh, but how do we know if that form of deceit is righteous or not? We have to have discernment. We have to understand what God is calling us to do. God did not want them to get ca uh, held captive, uh, so they had to hide in that place. But God is saying there is uh, unrighteous components that we must be able to see through. Let me tear down another false altar. Uh, people say you can't lie uh no let me understand in let us understand in the body of christ we need to walk with righteousness uh amongst one another uh when we're in the body of christ we must uh hold ourselves to a higher standard when we are walking our life in righteousness uh we must make sure that we are following all the tenets and the precepts of the lord uh by the spirit uh we must do that but when we are in a time of war or we do not have to disclose to the devil um, the every component that he's asking for. It is we do not have to be uh, we don't have to be truthful to the devil when we are in a time of spiritual war. And God is saying, "I need you to go hide and co uh, cover." And then the devil walks in and says, "Where are you?" Well, don't say a word. Stay right there. That in itself is deceit because you are in the room, but against the devil when he's coming to kill, steal and destroy you still need to go after him you need to be in a position there's a difference so how do you know when you're doing everything right on what the lord said it is called discernment hallelujah so that's another false idol that a uh, false altar that we must tear down now i am not telling you go out and just begin lying and and just that is not what i'm saying we need to be led by the spirit we need to follow exactly what the Lord says. We need to understand what God is pure, purely saying about each one of these things. And then let's go finally to 1 Corinthians 1 and 26. 1 Corinthians 1 and 26. We got two, two sets and then we're going to be done. 1 Corinthians 1 and 26 through 31, and then we're going to go to Luke 14, 7 through 15, and then we'll be completed. Hallelujah. One Corinthians. One Corinthians. All right, I got it here. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 31, it says, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world uh, to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not, that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. God, but by doing by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that just as it is written, let him who boasts boast in the Lord. So what God is saying with that, he qualifies the call. God um, may come to you and say, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And But you screaming back, I'm not ready. Or they said that I'm not ready. But God says, I've qualified the call. I've made things that uh, shouldn't win according to man's qualifications, win. 
I made things that look like they uh, have no opportunity to win, like Gideon with the 300 have no opportunity against four nations. But guess what? Because they were walking with the Lord, uh, he filled in the blanks and it overcame and he got the glory because uh, they saw only the 300. The, the, the man looks upon the outward appearance and they didn't realize the God that was working on their behalf. He, just because you don't think you're ready doesn't mean you're not ready. How do I know this? How do I know uh, that sometimes we get in our own way and we don't see exactly what God is saying to us and when he's calling us to move? Not all the times do we feel that we are ready. Many times we are ready before we are even ready. And God says, and he's showing in uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7, now it came about, verse Chapter 7, verse 1. Now it came about when uh, the king, which is David, lived in his house. And the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. The king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within tent curtains, uh, in the tent of meetings. Uh, Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your mind. Remember that. Go do all that's in your mind. See, there's things that sometimes we get wrapped up in our own mind on what we think should occur and how it should be uh, for the Lord is with you says Nathan but in the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan go and say to my servant David thus the, says the Lord are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in for I am uh, I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up sons of Israel from Egypt even to this day so ultimately what God is saying is that we can get in our own way even if we are doing it righteously and we can get so focused on what we sh think we should be doing we can get so focused on the process he says understand the process accept the process believe that the process will take you through but when I call you don't be in such a ton of vision state don't get focused on what you think you can't do and the fullness that you haven't gone through get out of your mind and go for and walk in the way that I've said. So God had to pull David out of it and he sent somebody to do it. He sent Nathan over to snap David out of the way. And what God said to David simply was uh, didn't I say that I would establish for you I've already set up the course of events for when I shall be housed and it's not for you to do. I will establish and I will make your name known uh, for time to come. God is telling us when he calls us forward to do a certain thing, we gotta be, we can't be so tunnel vision that we forget exactly what he's telling us to do and what the purpose is. We have to not get so tunnel vision that we just get wrapped up in our mind, that we're able to be flexible to the move of the spirit, that we're able to be flexible to the move of God, that when he tells us what to do and where to go, that we're willing to move as he tells us to move and know that he will be the one who has establishes and he's gonna be the one who build what does Jesus tell Paul or uh, Peter on this rock I shall build my church on this rock I shall Build because we are people on this rock. I shall build you and I on this rock. I shall build it. And if I allow God to build it, if Jesus walks in here and he builds me and he puts his hand to the plow with me and he tells me what to do and I do it per his prescription, he will come through and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We may not feel that we are ready. Uh, paraphrasing Luke 14 and 7 through 15 because we don't have time I'm way over my time uh, Luke 14 7 through 15 it says uh, this was the parable of the guest uh, if you are invited to the uh, the party if you are invited to the wedding and you invited to the meal you go in as when you are humble and you sit down and outside of the 
<coughs> guest of honor seat. And when uh, the Lord comes and sees you sitting in a place that is beneath where you should be sitting, but he understands the humility and why you sat there, he will come to you and say, friend, I got another seat for you. I got another plate place for you. You're walking in humility. I'm closing now. I'm closing the books now. Uh, you're walking in humility. You're walking in my way. You're doing what I'm asking you to do. Uh, get out of your way and realize that and get out of your mind. Realize I'm sending people to help urge you to the next level. I'm sending you people uh, to help move you to the next level and keep that humility about you. Keep that servant nature about you. When you go into the room where you are invited, sit in the seat uh, that you think you should be in out of humility. Uh, but know that I am God and when I come through the room, when I come into the place and I see you where I know you shouldn't be, even out of humility, there's nothing wrong with where you sit, but I'm about to elevate you and place you in a position of deserving uh, recognition. I'm placing you in a position of higher elevation. I'm moving you closer to me. I'm moving you in a renowned place. I'm moving in you into a place where you shall receive God, a favor from me as well as from men. God is moving on your behalf. Just don't stay uh, positioned in the, rooted in the position that you feel that God has placed you in now because God is a moving God. He sees things in eternity and he knows when you should move to the next level, to the next thing. And God is calling you to higher levels, to higher position. Believe God for where he's taking you. Believe God for the prescription. Believe God that he is elevating your discernment. He says, be a discernment. Be obedient and continue to eat solid foods. Be obedient and continue to get the word of God in you. Be obedient and walk out and practice the word of God and allow the word of God to illuminate uh, what is good and evil. Have the Holy Spirit working in connection with the word of God and you shall elevate your discernment as God takes you into the next level. Believe that the level of discernment must elevate. You have to work in it. You have to be prepared now. You have to be okay when God moves you, even if you don't feel that you are prepared, that he's about to show you something. Get out of your own mindset. Get out of your own mind's way and understand that God is moving you to a level that you've never seen before. Just believe God and trust in him. He's setting all of this before us to see exactly what we need to see. He's tearing down these false altars because some things about these false altars, uh, uh, they are hindering us. They're placing God in a box. And when we place God in a box, uh, we place ourselves in a box uh, because there's only a certain level uh, uh, that we can go through, go to with a God that is limited. Uh, we serve a limited, limitless God. We saw a serve a God who is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. We serve a God who is omnipresent, omnipotent. We serve a God who is all powerful. We serve a God who is all knowing, omniscient. We serve a God who is a God of everything. He is the creator of everything. He is even the creator of our mindset. God knows exactly what we're going through. He knows exactly what we're dealing with. He even came down to experience it himself. And so God says, I need you to see me for me and take me out of the box and take me out of the restraints. Release the power of me within your mind. Allow the power of me to be as limitless in your mind as I am God. God is taking us to new heights. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for God uh, and all that he has done. Jesus 
went to the cross to die for our sins and he left us behind a story. He left us behind revelation. He is not a dead God. He is a living God. He died on the cross and after three days, after wrestling heaven uh, in hell uh, to take the keys from the devil, he rose. After three days, he rose. He walked for 40 more days to impart a lot of him into the apostles and he left behind uh, the Holy Spirit when he ascended. Uh, God says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you that you shall receive power and a ability. You have the Holy Spirit. You have power and ability. Tap right into it. Tap fully into it. Tap firmly into it. God is saying uh, that as we continue to tap into him, he will come through for us. Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, he ascended into heaven and he is living. Uh, the revelation that he left behind, it's still living. It's still active. It's still evolving for us to be, for it to be revealed in our life. Uh, that revelation isn't just something that's dead and gone. Uh, it is something that is alive right now. That's why God says, write the vision, write the revelation and make it plain. Write what I give you, write what I uh, uh, speak to you, write what I talk to by imparting you. Write it plainly and allow the Holy Spirit to move because vision is perceived by the Holy Spirit. Uh, write the vision on tablets. It can be real tablets. It can be email. It can be uh, your phone. Uh, it can be on paper. Uh, but most importantly, write the vision that God has given you on the tables of your heart. When you write it on the tables of your heart, those that see it and the Holy Spirit with in them, uh, connects with the Holy Spirit in you, uh, just like Mary uh, causing Elizabeth's baby to jump, it'll cause something to jump in them, it'll cause something to spark in them uh, just because uh, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came in contact the Holy Spirit in them and the Holy Spirit in you came in contact, the baby within them shall leap uh, they will be able to read what is on the tables of your heart and they shall run with it, God says there is going to be movement in this season, uh, though it may seem like it tarries, though it may seem like it takes a long time, just wait for it. I'm in Habakkuk 2. Uh, just because it's hallelujah, just because it seems like it may tarry, just wait for it. Uh, because even though it may seem like there's a little delay, it shall not delay. It is rushing to the end. It is quickening to the end. It is rapidly sprinting to the end. What God has said shall come to pass is going to come to pass. He is not a God that should lie. What he speaks oh, shall come. He is not a God that should lie, nor a man that should offer repentance. He is perfect. He is honorable. He walks with integrity. So when he says that anything that he gave you at the beginning is coming to pass, it's already in works. Uh, let's stand on the rampart so we don't hinder the progress uh, for our God is calling us to greatness, to greater abilities, to greater authority. Stand firm in what he says and believe him at his word. The word shall go out and do the very thing it is called to do. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that you have given. And we thank you for all that you're doing. Allow it to continue to rest in us and allow it to continue to work in us. We believe you what you said. We believe you what you released. We believe all that you are. In your mighty matchless name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I pray this blessed you all. I pray this was something that uh, revved up your spirit and gave you energy uh, to continue on, gave you uh, things to tear down and perspectives to tear down and mindsets to shift. Uh, God gave me this lesson in a whole different fashion, but he pulled it out exactly as necessary. I thank God for what he gave me uh, to release today and even though I thought it was going to go into other parts he said just continue and just finish and he has actually gone through the three components that he was talking about today uh, the first component is that um, the conception the concept of um, inclusion God is an exclusionary God with inclusionary 
character. And when you are in the body of Christ, he is an inclusionary God. Um, the uh, fully within the body of Christ. Uh, when we are looking at the way we go, discernment must be um, within us and elevated and worked on. The Holy Spirit will give full um, discernment, uh, but there are some components that the Holy Spirit and, and the Word of God will give us access to, uh, even if we're not called to fully have that full gifting. Uh, but we can all rely on the Holy Spirit, and then when we rely on the Holy Spirit and use the Word of God, we can see things more in greater uh, perspective. And then finally, um, Ella, um, I want to say it exactly what it says here. It says um, elevation, activation, and uh, mobilization. Be ready to move when God says move. Know, that's why you have to have discernment. Know that it is God. Don't be rushing to jump out when you're not ready. Don't rush out when God hasn't said it. Don't rush out when God sends a, uh, when the devil sends a counterfeit. Just make sure that when it's when it's spoken that you go and test all things that you get in the face of God everything that you've learned get in the face of God and say hey because there's Nathan's that he will send to you to get you out of your own mind and get you out of your own way and so that God can speak to you and get you on the path that you need to go it doesn't have to be completed for God to elevate you it doesn't have to be where you think it should be it only needs to be completed to the level that God wants it completed and then as he uh, completes that process he will he can also work with you on multi uh, multiple components and he can process you and have you do an assignment he can process you and have you practice he can have you do multiple things, but we got to make sure that when God calls us to elevate, when God calls us to activate, when he calls us to mobilize, that we are ready and moving, that we are ready to shift when he says shift and we're not stuck in our own way, in our own thinking. I thank God for this word. I pray that you all were blessed. Remember, discernment is so important. Uh, have a great night. And if you get time uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, you will see the uh, word that God gave me and the reading for discernment for spiritual discipline on even how to practice it. Um, but discernment is going to be so important. It's going to be a great, uh, a major tool in our con all of our continued walks um, with God. Uh, you all have a blessed night. I pray many blessings over your life. Strength be your portion that you rely on God and he continues to provide. Um, you all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.